Hello everyone, welcome back. This video we're going to be talking about the basics of a Java program and we're not talking about like that conceptual garbage we've been talking about for the last four videos. <laughs> we're going to start doing some hands-on work, getting some user input, creating variables, etc. It's going to be a lot of fun, but you know what is even more fun than watching my videos? Practicing your coding interviews. And you can do that thanks to our sponsor, Pramp. Pramp is a super legit website where you can go and practice your technical interviews such as data structures and algorithms, as well as some system design, front end, data science, all kinds of stuff. So you definitely wanna go check them out if you're hoping to get a job in this field, or if you just wanna you know, put your coding skills to the test, you're gonna get paired with another individual and they're gonna ask you some questions on the fly. And it's by far one of the best ways to get over that social anxiety with interviewing, because you're now going to not only have to know how to code, but you're going to have to know how to code while someone's watching you and judging all your actions. <laughs> and now that I think about it, I'm probably not doing a very good job selling this to you guys. <laughs> but trust me, this is gonna be one of the best ways to really solidify your knowledge and make sure you really know what you're doing with coding. I've used it for practice of interviews. It helped me, it's tremendously useful, so go check them out, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description. All right, so moving on to the basics of Java. So here is how we get output. So you can write stuff to the console here, we've seen that in the other videos, no big deal. But one thing that's gonna become very useful for us is getting user input. And unfortunately, Java's way of doing this is just a little bit more complicated than some other programming languages, but it's not tremendously over the top complicated. Just for now, follow my code and you'll understand it soon. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say scanner. And then we're going to basically create a scanner and give it a name. So we could call it scanner with a lowercase s. And this shows something important that Java is case sensitive. So scanner with an uppercase s and scanner with a lowercase s are two separate things. Then we use this equal sign, which is known as the assignment operator. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then we say new scanner with a capital S and put some parentheses. Inside of these parentheses, we're going to say system.in. And you can see we have an error with scanner having this red line under it. And if you hover over, you'll get these suggestions. So it's saying, yo dude, your scanner doesn't exist. You're going to need to import that in order for it to work. And there's all these different options. <laughs> and the one we're going to want is this java.util. So click that, and you can see if we scroll up, we got this new import statement. This import statement has to do with packages. Java code is, this is a terrible word to use, but it's packaged inside of these things called packages. So even our class over here, my sweet program, inside of our package explorer is inside of this default package. We could go and create our custom packages. It's basically just another way to organize your code. So just how we have a class with a bunch of stuff in it, well now we can have a package with a bunch of classes in it. <laughs> and you're probably wondering like, dude, why does this have to be so stinking complicated? <laughs> well the reason we have these packages is because like we saw, if I undo this, we hover over scanner here, you can see that there's numerous different versions of scanner. So if we didn't have these packages, we would have naming conflicts because if we wanted to use this scanner here and this scanner here and this scanner here. We wouldn't be able to mix all of those together if they were all in the same container. We have to have a way to organize them and say, hey, this scanner is from java.util and this scanner is from com blah, 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 blah. <laughs> so it's just a way to organize our code one step more. For now, we're not gonna be worrying about creating packages. We're just gonna be using the packages that are given to us. And the way we can use them is just using these import statements and saying what package we wanna use. So we wanna use java.util.scanner. Now when we do this import, all that it is doing is making our life easier because now it knows what scanner we're talking about. If I were to comment this line out, just keep it there for a second, we would have to say java.util.scanner and then it would work. But over here, we'd also have to say java.util.scanner. So now there's no errors, but it's just a lot more verbose. So what this import statement is, is it just makes our life easier because we no longer have to fully qualify the entire name. So the word fully qualify literally just means putting the dots before it and saying exactly where the class is coming from. Scanner is coming from java.util. So obviously typing all these extra words is gonna kill us, so we don't wanna do that. So we wanna get rid of all of those prefixes. We don't wanna fully qualify our name. My, uh, my puppy's here to say hello. You wanna say hi, Kavi? You want food? <laughs> now we just gotta uncomment that and we should be good to go. Okay, so that was basically a really super long explanation of how to create a scanner. <laughs> now let's talk a little bit about this syntax here. 
So we've talked about this a little bit, but basically what we're doing is we're creating this variable scanner. And this is the name of the variable, the identifier. Every variable in Java needs a type. So the format's going to be like this. It's going to be type, identifier, assignment operator, new, type, semicolon. So this is the structure to create a new object. So correlating that to the scanner, the type is scanner, the name is scanner with a lowercase s, then we use the keyword new, and then we say the type again, which is the same as scanner. And then we have these parentheses, which we'll call the constructor of this class. And we'll get into all that later, but for now, all we have to know is that when we put new and then the name and then parentheses, we're calling a constructor to basically give us a new instance of this class scanner. So we're creating our own scanner. So just like we're creating a class here, my sweet program, at some point someone created this scanner class. And now all we want to do is we want to say, yo, I like this scanner class. Can I basically use it as a blueprint to create a new scanner? And we're going to name that scanner lowercase scanner. And then we're passing an argument in here, system.in, which is basically just a way to say where we're getting our input from, which is going to come from the console. So that's how you do that. Now that we got all that stuff underneath our belt, let's actually try to get some input. So the way we're going to do that is we are going to basically make a string. So we're going to say string, give it an identifier. For example, we could call it name. And then we can assign it a value from the scanner by saying scanner dot next line, just like that. Gosh, there we go. Like I said, it's a little bit complicated, but this is how we get some input. So what we're going to do is we're going to print out and say, what is your name? And then what we're going to do is we're going to greet this person by doing a system out. And here's a little shortcut. If you type sys out, hold control and press space. Boom. There you go. That's how you do it on a Mac. I don't know how to do it on anything else. Sorry. <laughs> We're just going to say hello, put a plus sign and then name. So the whole structure, we're going to ask for the name. We're going to create a new scanner object and use that to get a new line. And then we're going to output it like so. So let's run it. Yes. Save. What is your name? Dog, my name is Caleb. Hello, Caleb. Sweet. So now we basically, we've created a dynamic program, but we no longer have to pass in command line arguments. We can just execute it. So that means if we're in the terminal, we don't have to say my sweet program, Caleb. We can just say my sweet program and it'll ask for my name and it works. Here is the syntax for output and here is the syntax for input. Now you're welcome to go to the next video, of course, after you check out all the links and content in the description, but I did want to just go on a little rabbit trail if you're just looking for some extra information. If you remember from earlier videos, we talked about the concept of something being static, and basically that means, hey, you don't have to make an instance of something. Well, here's something that's not static. This scanner.nextline is not static. And the reason it's not is because we have to create a new scanner object. If it was static, it would look like scanner.nextline with a capital S because we'd be calling it directly on the scanner blueprint rather than on an instance of the blueprint. So that's just a little side note and we're gonna talk more about that and once we get to object-oriented programming. But that's all I got for you guys on user input and output. Hopefully that was helpful for you guys. And of course, I will see you in the next video because you are gonna go to the next video, right? You're not gonna quit. You're gonna be like the rest of the world, are you? All right, I'll catch you there. Peace.